when I was 16 years old, I discovered for the first time that I had something to say in a social debate. I had an opinion. I sat in my classroom arguing about one of the most known hydropower expansions in Norway. I knew the details and I commented on any debate that was on TV. I was good with words and I was totally convinced. For some of my teachers, I suddenly became more visible. Together with three, friend, three school friends, I even made a political fight song, Let the River Live. We have to fight, not only with words we said to each other, this is for real. So we talked about going demonstrating, and we saw no problems. Traveling 2,000 kilometers up north, or sleeping in tents in 20 degrees below zero, or linking together in change or being arrested by the police. But it took some time for us to discuss what to wear, how to pack, and by the time we were ready to leave, this very famous d demonstration in Alta was actually over. I was young at that time, but I can still remember the feeling I had inside of me. I had seen something new, and I was convinced that I could change the world. As a grown-up, I still have my opinions, and I keep on fighting for the things that I think is good in life, but seldom on the barricade or in the front line. I am a nurse. And as a nurse, I try to help other people find their way out of something difficult. I work with acute sickness and injury. When people have had their lives turned upside down because of an accident or finding out they have a severe disease, it takes time to heal, both physically and mentally. It is hard work. They have to change, otherwise they will die. They have to, to find a new way of living, a new path, a new way, so to speak. And when they have found a new way to go, you can see how this affects people. I think to take another place in the room, and for me, this is visualization of dignity. If we are going to help another human being, we need to know about dignity, what it is, how to act, and how to give dignity. For me, dignity consists of three deliberate choices. First, human basic rights. Everybody and everything has the same worth. Second, dignity through what we do. You are not what you think, but what you do. Dignity shows through the meeting between you and me. And the third thing is how you choose to look upon yourself. You have to give yourself what you give anybody else. Generosity, acceptance and love. Can you think of a more wonderful feeling when you discover or understand a whole new meaning? The tools for change that I have found in my own life as much as in my professional, the very powerful tools for change with dignity are Joy, beauty, and love. There are so many ways to show joy, beauty, and love. The point is, or the main thing is, is that we all can find our own way to express it. Nurse or not nurse, I am still this beautiful 16 years old girl that believes that it is possible to make a difference. So now I'm going to tell you about my wildest project yet, or none of, the le none of the least, the accomplishment of it. And people ask me, why on earth did you do it, self-imposed and all by yourself, and for two years in your spare time? There has to be a balance in life between the serious and the playful things in life. If you have this balance, you can achieve so much better in any areas you are into. This has something to do with your mental health. And for me, this means that I love process in, in music, in writings, and also in creative works like this. I have, for a very long time, been worrying about human-created waste.
We use too much and we reuse so very little. I live in Norway, and in Norway, as it is in many other countries, we wrap everything into plastic. We take it off and we just throw it away. When I make a dinner, I probably fill half a shopping bag with plastic waste. Haven't we all seen these dreadful pictures? Animals and fish are dying with loads of plastic waste in their stomach. Sometimes the plastic blocks the intake of nutrition and they are actually dying of starvation. How can I make a change? How is, how is that possible with my tools, joy, beauty and love? Is that really possible? Well, I decided to participate in a parade on the 17th of May and I invited 25 of my best friends to join me. We had this parade. Orsa's friends, I am Orsa, my name is Orsa. Orsa's friends in plastic, the joy of recycling. And our main slogan was remove the plastic from the ocean. Now, this was on the 17th of May. That is our national day, as I told you. This is a good day. Everybody's out eating ice cream, join fun activities. You know, the marching bands are out. And cities throughout Norway, they arrange parades for everybody to join. If you are in an organization or a sport club, you want to show what you like to do in life, then you join the parades. And this is both for children and adults. But what I love the most about the day is this. This is the day when most people dress up in their national costumes. And I just love national costumes. They are called bunads. We know of over 200 different types and a lot of variations. If you are going to buy a national costume, it's quite expensive because it's all handmade and special made for you, and it also has a lot of silver with it. And you can, of course, also make one yourself uh, as well, but then it's quite strict because you have to join a special group and have a special trainer to help you with it. During a period of two years, I made 25 national costumes out of garbage, primarily out of my own plastic waste from my own household. I wanted to Buna to bring joy and recognition. I made it as beautiful as possible, same form, same pattern, same uh, colors and expressions as close to the ones that I have come to know the most, the Norwegian costumes from the southern part of Norway. By choosing national costumes as many regards as sacred, by choosing this as my way of expression, I wanted to challenge our attitude to what we today call garbage. Once I had decided to do this, something amazing actually start, uh, started happening with me. I was changed, because every time I were to throw things away, I had to, to think, can this be used for the product? Is this something for the Bunad? And suddenly, I was staring at liver paste cans, or taps from beer and soda cans, thinking, yes, here we have the silver rings for the Bunad vest. <laughs> And you know the protection you have around wine bottles? Well, I cut them up and use it for frills for the apron. <laughs> Actually, it's all about how you look at things. I was taking a blood test at the work, and you know, suddenly I saw it. The package on the top of the glass tube I used for analyzing the blood. There it was, something for the bunad. <laughs> And I could take walks and come home with different stuff, like plastic bands from police uh, barracks or sports arrangements and even historical excavations. And I remember once, I went with my daughter. We went actually to a new place. I hadn't been in this forest before. And you know, everything was green, it was a huge tree, and I looked up and suddenly saw a lot of plastic hanging from the trees. And I turned to my daughter and said, we had to clean up, we can't leave it like this, we can't have plastic in the nature. 
So I came home with a big smile on my face, and then I said hello to my husband. Now, he is very into sports. And I am deeply sorry for all the runners that ran the wrong way this afternoon. <laughs> This project has a lot to do with finding the good quality, the best quality. And I was thinking, how can I make um, the, the skirts? You know, they had to be a bit thick and in black, and I found them in big garbage bags. 25 ladies walking in this parade for five kilometers in garbage bags. How do you think garbage bags sound? It's not the sound of silence. <laughs> the real vests are made out of um, wool or brocade. And again, I was thinking, how can I make brocade out of plastic? Well, I made it out of chocolate paper. I think I know what you're thinking now. They must be, have been eating a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> For two years, I never baked a cake. I gave the people chocolate. <laughs> and then I asked for the litter. <laughs> uh, what I adore the most is this. This is the costume, actually, from this part where we are now. If you turn around, we, you will see the beautiful back. And this takes us back over 200 years in time, to a period where they really had to ask, how can I use this once more? They had another mindset. The real ones are made with beautiful silver ribbons on the back here, and I made it out of duct tape. Kasserte gjenstander. Uvanlige kombinasjoner. Forventningsfulle damer som skal bli kledd opp til 17. mai. Kjære alle gode plastvenner, jeg er så glad at dere stiller opp. Hun skal nå realisere det hun har jobbet med i to år. Randi, dette er din bunad. Og Marit, her er din. Det tror jeg er faktisk henne som er utforset til deg. Og her har du fått litt ekstra, sånn som jeg har nederst her. Så er det jo sånn som du kjøper i taxfri, så har jeg klippet det opp, og så blir det fine frynser. Jeg har lovt 25 til sammen. Bare for gøy. Det er bare for det vi skal i Borgertoget. Å ha en parole som går på Åses venner i plast, gleden med resirkulering. Og så kommer neste, det som er veldig viktig for oss, det er dette med plasten opp av havet. Det er Øystagder og Vestagderbunaden som er utgangspunktet. Og sånn at vi får tvisten godt på. Skal vi se. Jeg syr jo ikke til vanlig, men jeg hadde dette underlige greiet at det må jo kunne gå an å finne ut da. Det er jo sånn som på denne bunaden, så spiser vi nok en del lever på steg. Så det er jo blitt, det ligner jo veldig, egentlig. Og det er disse kontaktlinsebeholderne igjen. Og så er det vel noen julepynt her, som er brukt da. Og dette for eksempel, det er vel en V-pose som jeg bare har klippet opp da. Er vi ikke fine? Så vi trodde jo nesten 
Du var gir du best med din bunad. Nej, det tror jag må vara en tappekran. Det är väldigt fasta gjort. Och så skruven i vi. Extra fint. Men jag lurar på om det är din kapslande till den ena kaffemaskinen här. Ja, det är okej. Det är den ena gången. Vi ska kun göra det i år. Aldrig igen. Så det är en värdelös fallare. This is my way. This is my visualization of dignity. Why don't you go out and find yours? Thank you.